Well, hey, 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 everybody. <clears throat> Getting ready for tonight's live call-in show. What channel am I on so I can hear myself? There we go. All righty. Let's get everything set up here. Do, 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 do. Go live over here. I have too many wires. Talking to Scott. He's getting ready to go into Beast's Castle. Come on, go live. Why isn't Instagram cooperating? Let's see. What's going on with Instagram? I need this real quick. So we'll get started here in just a second. So hang tight. Let's try this. Copy that. Can anybody see us on Instagram? That's the key. Let's see. You might have to reboot Instagram. I don't think we're live on Instagram. Let's try this. Let's copy that. All right, let's add Instagram back. Happy Sunday, everybody. Now we should get Instagram. There we go. All right, so is everybody still here? Everybody should be here. All right. Hallelujah. Hello, everybody on Instagram. Hello, everybody on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. And everywhere else around the world. Flying solo tonight, but we're going to call Scott later. So can everybody hear me okay? Let me know in the chat. Let me know on Instagram, please. Oops. There we go. Now we're live on Instagram. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let me know how we sound before we get started here. Let me know if you can hear me okay. We're all green here. William says that's good. Happy Sunday to Lisa down in Mobile. Give me the thumbs up if we're good to go. Oh, John says, sounds good. I just saw your email, John, right before I hit the go live button. So I'll get to you right after the show. Oh, my goodness. That Duke guy went down hard. Oh, if I did that, I would not be getting up for a week. Oh, but I also would not be dunking. Oh, my gosh. Holy smokes. All right. I like it. So I hooked my iPhone up to the board through Bluetooth. So we're going to give Scott a call during dinner. It be our guest tonight, which is going to be loud. So we're going to try to make, we're going to add one more variable to the board, which is always a bad thing because you always try to add one more thing and it makes everything fall apart. Hey, Rhonda Lee. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> but you know, that's me. Hello, Kim Taylor. Just saw Scott in Italy. Now Scott is in uh, Beast Castle. He's been everywhere today. I know. That same with me, William. I used to dunk. I no longer dunk. I am. I almost did Mike in the Midwest about my basketball career. 
today, but I decided to talk about a former coach. Maybe next week. I'm wondering if anything is excluded in the quick service at Coronado on the dining plan. Ah, that's a good question. I don't know. I'm trying to think what would be. Because there's not as many options as there used to be with Pepper Market. I still call it Pepper Market, by the way. So you were a point guard, William. Just call yourself the point guard. I'm going to need a few calls tonight. All right, let's get some stories here. Disney Springs drone show. Mm-mm. sorry sorry okay let's do a show i'm sorry man i got everybody sick been sick around here and i'm finally getting over it all right let's move to this I have so many things wait i need this for the discord too many screens too many screens i love my picture here see my ipad that's us date date night at Disneyland on the teacups. I don't even do the teacups, but I was swept up in date night at Disneyland. All right, let's see who turned the sound off. Go to Discord. Let's see what's going on with Discord. Oh, Abel's got a question. Okay. Let's start the show rolling since it's just me. Let's see here. How can I do this? Sit here. Sit here. And. Let's try that again. That wasn't loud enough. Let's delete that. So I don't have to mess with that edit. All right. I don't even know why I mess with that little music. I think it's fun. <laughs> I did call the nighttime drone show. It was just putting two and two together. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Got to hit the red record button. Got to get down the right. There we go. Well, hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday night BOGP open line. That's right. It's Sunday night. It is March 24th, 2024. And I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BRGuestPodcast.com. But you can find me lately over in our BR Guest Podcast clubhouse. That's right. It's our Discord channel. It's BRGuestPodcast.com slash Discord. If you're not there, you need to get there right now. We're going to be taking your calls for the next hour. It's 407-413-9395. Again, that's 407-413-9395. I know that music's annoying, but I just like kind of playing in with the house band. That's kind of fun. And I would be throwing it to Scotty G at this point, but we are not doing that tonight because Scotty G is, he is a member of the Be Our Guest podcast crew and he's checking out our restaurant as we speak. He is uh being seated in in uh, the Beast Castle in the Magic Kingdom right now. So we are going to check in with him live at the Magic Kingdom here in just a matter of moments. So stand by for that. We're going to give him a call. He's been all over Epcot today. He's now at the Magic Kingdom. He's staying at Coronado Springs. He's been checking out Flower and Garden. 
He rope dropped Epcot this morning. So we're going to check in to see how things are down at Walt Disney World. Man on the on a mission today. He's been going hard, and we're going to find out what things are like down at Walt Disney World. But we're going to be taking your calls first, so we're going to let him get seated before we give him a call because this is the BOGP open line. So we want to talk to you. So it's just me flying solo here in the studios in beautiful St. Peter's, Missouri. But I want to talk to you about what's going on. And we had some news this week, right? We've been talking what we did the show about three Fridays ago about that last hour at Walt Disney World. We need to spice it up. We need fireworks and a parade at the Magic Kingdom. We were talking about that. How could they spice things up? They could bring back a nighttime parade at the Magic Kingdom. We've been missing that. You know, we we long for those days with Spectral Magic with um, the Main Street Electrical Parade paired with a great fireworks show. Those were the days, right? We talked about that 15 years ago. We also brought up the idea of drones coming to Walt Disney World at some point. And then lo and behold, on my busiest day this week, because we were booking all those cruises for folks for the summer of 2025, I take 15 minutes to eat a turkey and cheese sandwich at about 11 o'clock. And I get this one word text from Ricky. And it says, actually, there's two words. It says Mike comma drones in all capital letters with a bunch of exclamation points. And I, my heart was happy. I felt like I, I was smart for once in my life that I saw this coming, that we were going to get drones at Walt Disney world. At some point it was just inevitable because I've been doing it over in France. And I had seen that, that at Walt Disney world, they had hired some drone folks that, that moved to central Florida. And so they were obviously working on something, but I was surprised by the, by the location, but it makes total sense to me. I love this. The drone show is going to come this summer and it's going to come to Disney Springs. So here's what we know about the drone show. It's called dreams that soar. And what it says is that at Disney Springs drones are going to take to the sky above Lake Buena Vista with dreams that soar a summertime experience. that will, that will be a late night perk for visitors. You Can Fly takes on a whole new meeting as we showcase Disney's story celebrating the joy of flight with state-of-the-art drones choreographed to create designs in the sky and paired with a soaring musical score and memorable movie quotes. After spinning a delay, delighting in shopping, discovering fun activities, and savoring diverse flavors in Disney Springs, turn your eyes to the skies above the west side with a show amongst the stars. Disney Dreams That Soar will run nightly from May 24th to September 2nd. So this is going to be very similar, I believe, to the other show, which was called Star Bright Holidays, which is the one that I've talked about on the show many times that I got to see. I think it was back in 2016 or 17. It, because they mentioned the West Side, and that's where they had us watch this show was on the west side where they staged us for the media event was behind bongos which was that gloria estefan restaurant which i believe right now is the current location of summer house um so that's i think where you're going to want to see this show but drones are awesome because the drones themselves are silent so they can just play a musical score and these drones will light up and make all these designs in the sky they just they appear they're gone it, 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 if you've never seen a drone show the first time you see one, you'll you'll go home and you'll evangelize to how cool it is because they'll have these at your local maybe ball games or civic events. They're becoming more and more popular because companies are, are you know taking these out and you know, there's companies that specialize in these drone shows. But I think it's it's a great reason to go to Disney Springs in the night. And and I you know Scott and Wade and I were talking about this in a in a message thread. And I don't believe Wade and Scott have a trip planned in this this window because it's not a very long window it's just the summer from may to september but we're going down for our cruise our cruise is july 6th to the 13th so we're doing that one week cruise but my my girls don't have any tickets and we're only going to be down there for that we can only be gone for eight days because of because of mallory's cheerleading schedule and Paige being gone for basketball we don't have time to go to walt disney world to go to the parks at all so we're not getting any theme park tickets However, you guys know, what do I say? You got to be in Central Florida the night before the cruise. So we're going to stay at Walt Disney World the night before the cruise. 
So when I hear about this, this is perfecto. So we'll go to Disney Springs. We'll get dinner, polite pig, maybe homecoming. You know, maybe we'll get deluxe burger. Maybe we'll go to Splitsville, bowl, have some dinner, and then watch this drone show. Perfect. Maybe we'll stay at French Quarter, Riverside, catch a boat down. I mean, this is a perfect night for the night before our cruise. I love this idea. This is going to be awesome for me. So I'm super excited about this. What do you guys think about this? Is this something that changes your plans? Is this something you see that's coming to the park here soon? Um, I, I just want to know what you're thinking about this. So give me a call, 407. I don't want to have to talk for the whole hour. So I want to speak with you. So give me a call at 407 413-9395. In the chat over on Facebook, Abel says, I just landed at MCO for a conference and may have a few hours to kill after seven on Monday and Tuesday. Thoughts on what I can accomplish at that time. All right, so let's give some ideas there for Abel. He's one of our great listeners of the show. He's in a conference down in Orlando, but he has some time to kill after seven Monday. So tomorrow and Tuesday, as we record this show live, Disney Springs. I mean, if you don't have tickets, oh, I forgot to kill the sound, but hey, we have a call. Thank goodness. And let's see who we have. Hey, who's calling in? Hey, Mike, it's Brandon up in New Hampshire. How are you? I am great. Thanks for calling. Without a co-host, it was going to be a lot of talking. So I'm glad that you uh, made it in. What's going on? Hey, just wanted to comment. I just heard uh, yesterday on my way home from work, you guys' last Sunday uh, call-in episode. So I want to give my couple of points on uh, Best Bites in Disney World, if that's okay. And also uh, the magic that's happened for me in Disney. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go for it. Rock on. All right. So to agree with one of your uh, people that called in there, the uh, the tuna bowl there over at Morimoto's is fantastic. But over at Morimoto Asia's, the best thing that you can get there is actually an appetizer. It's their sticky ribs. They are pork ribs with a sesame soy sticky glaze over the top, and you can get an order of three or six. You got to get the six because these things are just unbelievable. Everything about that sounds unreal. I mean, everything you just oh, mentioned sounds perfect. Crazy. <laughs> it sounds perfect. I could I could go for six, twelve. I mean, it double me up. I mean, they're not cheap by any means, but I mean, if you want, if you're, if you're a rib guy, which I am, I'm, I'm a big barbecue guy up here in New Hampshire. I mean, these things are phenomenal. There's nothing that I could even replicate about these things that can mix that sweet, savory, little bit of a saffron taste to them. I mean, it's just unreal. And I can see why they do three, because if you do six, your meal is like, eh, okay, well, I don't really need a whole meal after that. But that bim and bop that the lady mentioned in last week's show there, where they do it's table side. Uh, it's basically like a pork fried rice, but they sear it seared tuna and they cook it in a 500 degree clay bowl. It's unbelievable. If you, if you like any form of seafood. I do. My family doesn't. It's a shame. I got to eat it basically on cruises. And when, you know, the opportunity arises, but I could, t Oh man, I'm glad you brought that up. This is what I love. And I, again, here's another plug for the discord, which Ryan here in the chat on Facebook is saying how friendly everybody's been on the discord. And I have to totally agree. It's like a little clubhouse, but, this is one of those things people have been dropping in stuff like this that I've never heard of, but I've learned so much from our listeners just by hanging out in our discord over the past few weeks. And this is just another kind of thing here. I love that we're kind of all in this together to make our trips better. So I have this definitely tapped. I wonder if you can get this at that little walk-up window, like a little side order, you know, they have you can get the ribs. You can't get the bim and bop, but you can okay. get the ribs at the walk-up. <sighs> totally going for this <laughs> absolutely and the other uh the other favorite bite that i've got from disney is over at um haleo and it's this thing that they bring out a ceramic cinderella pillow like what her slipper would be placed placed on and they are potato and chicken croquettes and there's five of them on this little you know they put them in the four corners of the pillow and one in the middle i mean these things are phenomenal it takes over two full days to make these the way they're prepared but i will tell you that is a bite of heaven they're about three inches long they're cylindrical shaped they're probably an inch and a half in diameter thickness these things are a bite of mashed potato chicken heaven that are deep fried and oh my god mike i mean these things are unreal I've heard of those. Now I've never seen them or had them or anything like that, but I have heard somebody bring that up that those things are unbelievable. I've because you know they're almost mythical, right? Because they're so special. But I, I've heard of those. So yes. oh, it's 
it's it's nothing again that I could I wouldn't even try to replicate it. It's not worth it. I've tried the rib thing from Morimoto. It doesn't taste the same. I wouldn't even bother with these things. I mean, the way that they make these potatoes and this chicken croquette is just phenomenal. I mean, to know that, and this is one of the things that made Jose Andres famous. He performed this recipe on, I can't remember if it was Iron Chef. Yeah, it was Iron Chef America. And that's what won him the title were these croquettes. I'm glad he brought it there though. So you can get it, you know, if you really want to check it out, that's, that's, uh, that's what vacation's all about. Trying stuff, you know, getting out spurging you know, go for it. I Absolutely. You know, and like me and Scotty G, we like the finer foods in life and even the simpler things. I mean, the spring roll egg, the egg roll cart over at magic kingdom. I mean, those things are phenomenal too. Those are, those are nothing to sneeze at, but I mean, those are a couple of the bikes to me that sticks out of my mind and we've been back a couple of times and every time it's phenomenal. Uh, the one moment I wanted to tell you, I think I've already mentioned this to you before was a few years ago, we were doing the candlelight processional at Epcot and, the wife wasn't having it that day. We were doing a, um, the, uh, dinner package thing there where we were doing beer garden and then you get the tickets to go over to candlelight processional. And, and like I said, the wife wasn't feeling great. We, she wasn't looking to eat wiener schnitzel and bratwurst and <laughs> you got to you know, feel, all the you things feel beer, Yeah. Beer goodies, garden. You got to feel it. Yeah. You got, you, you can't just go in there like uh, not in the mood. Yeah. I, I totally agree with your wife. Totally. I mean, I, I would have been in there and I would have hammered down that all you can eat buffet. Like there was nobody's <laughs> business. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that would have been me and she'd have been sitting outside on a park bench green in the face thinking, Oh my God, I just want a soup or a simple sandwich. Yes. So I walked into the place and I talked to the, the guy at the front counter and he brings out a manager and I said, listen, I'll pay for the entire experience. I know what the, the ticket costs are and everything. And he goes, Oh, she's not feeling well. And I said, no, I said, he goes, and you just want tickets to the processional. So I'm like, yeah. So I pull out my credit card and, He's like, and you want to pay for the meal and the experience with the tickets? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, we signed up for this. We want to go see it later tonight. He goes, Merry Christmas, hands me the two tickets to the Candlelight Processional, did not charge me a dime and canceled the dining reservation part, but still gave us our preferred dining tickets. That's cool. Because, I mean, that's just being a human being, right? And understanding the situation. And, and you were being understanding, right? You were willing. You knew you, you knew what you signed up for. You were willing to go through with the transaction, but he's like, he, I mean, he made the right call because they were, you know, beer gardens, not losing money that day. And, and, and everybody comes out of the transaction happy. That that's, that, that makes me feel good. You know, and, and that was one of the, the coolest moments. that that's one of the only, like, I guess you could say the uh, sprinkle of magic, so to speak, the pixie dust that I've ever really experienced at Disney. So to, rebuttal that a couple of years later we went down there and we did the dining experience went over to rose and crown because you can't get enough of the fish and chips and the scotch egg and stuff like that oh, we were so going good. to the candlelight processional that night so we went and ate dinner and then she wanted to do something dif different that night which is fine we went over to um uh magic kingdom to do some other things instead of the candlelight so we've seen it a few times so we had these tickets given to us as part of the dining package i'm like why don't we do the same thing that was given to us so i took the two tickets and walked up to a cast member and said, can you give these to a couple of people that may not be able to get into the candlelight processional itself because it's, it's going to be packed. You know, you got standing room only after they're all the main seats are filled in. We gave them to her and I said, I don't care who they go to find a, a couple or, you know, a mother and daughter or father and son and give them to them. So she was absolutely ecstatic and we gave them to her and they actually took our picture for giving them the tickets because <laughs> we were going to do something different later that night. So I wanted to pay it back. I love that. That's, you know, that's how, you know, you see those people that sometimes like a McDonald's, you'll pay for the car behind you or, you know, what have you in the drive through that, but that's cool when you get to do that for somebody at Walt Disney world. Cause you never know that person could have just had something really bad happen in their life. And that's uh, you know, a little unexpected magic goes a long way because you never know who's getting that. Yeah. Somebody, somebody could really, exactly. really need you know, that. Pay it forward. Absolutely. It was given to us, give it to somebody else. If we're not going to use it, don't let it go to waste. Don't throw those tickets in the trash can. You know, I don't know if you can buy individual tickets to candlelight processional, but I know the, you know, the dining packages, we've done it enough times where I was like, all right, well, we're going to skip it this time. We're going to do something different tonight and, you know, make somebody else's day. And I like to think, you know, they call that the butterfly effect. I like to think that maybe it's because you did that, the, 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 the couple that got that, the father, son, the couple, whoever, whoever it might've been. Think about that. They could have kept it going. And then the, the person that they gave it to, you know, that, that it, realistically, probably not. But I mean, that thing could still be going on tonight somewhere, you know, like on the other side of the planet, exactly. somebody could still be passing that on. It, it could be the domino effect. And I you love just don't that. know. I mean, yeah. it could be somebody on the other side of the world that got those two tickets and it made their trip, you know, much more, uh, 
rememberable or something like that. You know, if it was there, I'd like to hope in my mind, you know, my mind's eye saying maybe it was somebody on the other side of the world. This was their one and only ever trip and somebody gifted them the two tickets, you know, and I, I like to play it out that way in my head. Hey, it's being, being a good person and, and doing a good deed is, is never, never the wrong answer. That's what I say. Absolutely. I wanted to comment one more thing about your last week's Sunday show. Cause I missed it. I was out of town, but um, you guys were talking about your snow, uh, snow falls from that past weekend. Well, you cursed us because yesterday we got a foot and a half of snow oh, here in New Hampshire God. and we were thought we were in long time spring. We've had great weather. It's been in the forties and the low fifties for like three weeks early spring it's here and then we got pounded on yesterday again it's like ah oh, mother nature said oh you thought you were done i think we're done here i mean it's been it, it, like today's high i think tomorrow's going to be in the 50s like for a high but i think we're I, I mean i'm calling it i think we're done with snow in missouri but uh you know it's going to be in like because of course the, this week pam and mallory are both on spring break coming up this week so the weather's like sketch, you know, it's like mid fifties. It was in the like eighties three weeks ago. So of course it drops down to where it's not very nice this week. They're all, they're both complaining. I'm like, Hey, you, at least you're off. I'm not off this week. So quit complaining. <laughs> then next weekend is supposed to be like, you know, for Easter. Yeah. That a win. I know. Well, the weather yeah, of course, next Saturday, I think the high is supposed to be like 78, right. You know, like right before Easter when they got to go back to school, but um yeah it's one of those things you know I, I think we're good but uh yeah you guys keep the snow up that way i saw the i saw the weather yeah it's not not pretty up northeast so yeah just i i don't need any of that i'm done i'm good you know i, I drive no, a convertible I i'm ready I'm to take the top. it's gardening season for us we're time to start yeah. growing the vegetables and go down to um uh flower and garden here in about a month uh first week of may and you know we do our thing down there we love the new i want to see the new topiaries looking forward to that but, uh, you know, we, we have to skate here in December and May every year just to go down and see how lovely Florida is. I will tell you, our December trip, we were down there two of the nights. One of them was down to 42 and one was 47, and we were not prepared. you got to be ready, and man. December, January. You, I, well, I mean, I think it's because I'm a runner and I've had to run in the cold weather down there. I always pack cold weather gear now. I don't play. Cause I've been caught in it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've got a couple of spirit jerseys yeah, sold yeah. Uh, that time because every time we've been down there in December, it's always been sixties to seventies, no. even low eighties during the day and possibly fifties to sixties at night. We were not ready for uh, low forties. No, I, cause I always bring my thermal stuff for my running. And then if I have to go into the parks and it's cold, I just wear my thermal layer under and I'm good. And then I take it off in the afternoon. There but, you go. Yeah. yeah so you yeah. think, you think smarter. I, well, uh, hey, I, think I positively no, like I, I'm glass half full. I'm like, yeah, not bad. This this is going to be good. What I've learned is, as I get older, I, I get colder easier. I know I'm getting like 90 years old, it feels like, but I can't be, I, I don't like being cold. I just, I do not like being cold anymore. I used to, I used to hate it, but you know, I, I, I not mind it, but I hate being cold. So I, I got the, I got the, again, I'm a new Englander. I'm pretty used to the cold, uh, but I had the pipe dream of it's always warm in Florida. And yeah, I was not... truly <laughs> misleaded this last trip. I will tell you that much. Hey, well, the, we were at Animal Kingdom Lodge, so what can you say? Oh, sit by the fireplace. Sit by, sit. Oh my God! Exactly. Yeah, totally. Yep. Go down into the whatever. lobby, sit yeah. by the fireplace, and it was snug as a bug in a rug, as they say. Absolutely. Hey, well, thank. Hey, real quick, I mean, do, do you guys ever sail Disney Cruise Line? I have never done Disney Cruise Line. I am petrified of being on a boat where I can't see land. Oh man, got to do it. I mean, just, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's one so of those big. unrational fears. I will do it, though. I will do it. And the first trip will always is going to be the Alaska one because that just looks fantastic. I know. Seriously, if it wasn't so expensive, I'd do it. But I, I, I so want to, but it's expensive. But I, I am going to do it because I do want to see my, I because I, like when I go to Disneyland, you see my you see my camera roll on my iPhone. I take a picture of every yep. mountain I see between St. Louis and Disneyland from the plane, like any kind of mountain. I mean, like course i take them like all the rockies we go over the rockies but then you start seeing other ones like you know out in the desert southwest and stuff i i love mountains so you know of course i like go into alaska i'd be just a kid in the candy store glaciers and all that stuff and all the snow oh my god but yeah i am going to make it happen but i just i got to get my kid through college you know or at least get her off yep yeah. I, I hear you my <laughs> 27 years old nowadays so we're yeah. past that age but we have mountains here in new hampshire nothing like uh the rockies or anything like that but i live at the base of one of the most climbed uh, mountains in the entire country. It's called Mount Monadnock here in New England. And it's, it's a beautiful, I mean, especially when the snow is on the cap and it's nice down below. 
Uh, we have the White Mountains here in New Hampshire, which is Franconia Notch, Mount Washington, which has the most extreme weather of anywhere in the country. But uh, it, it, they are gorgeous. I mean, I'm a hiker. So to me, to go up and down these mountains and over these ridges, the, the photography you can get off of even your own phone that you carry in your pocket is phenomenal. And that's what we live for. I mean, we have terrain differences of 50 miles can mean 5,000 feet just in driving. I saw, I saw actually that on, cause on, on Sunday and Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, usually I watch a show called aerial America. It's all about the States and it's shot by drones. It's from about 10 years ago, but it's on the Smithsonian channel and it's always on Sunday mornings, just like a block of it, like five, five hours in a row. It should be at Epcot. It's so Epcot, but they've shown that so I've seen those mountains and it's gorgeous. And they say people always, they say people get caught up there in weather a lot of times and get killed. Because the weather will change. So oh, that's just it. I mean, it's one yeah. of the most treacherous mountains in the world, Mount Washington. I mean, it can be 60, 70 degrees down in the valley and it can be negative 30 at the peak. Yeah. So it's, that's what it's they're saying. no Everest by any means, but it is, but they there are a lot of loss of life on that yep. mountain, unfortunately, because people are just not prepared yep. for what that's they're what going they said. through. They said, you know, it'll be beautiful at the base. They'll get up there. They won't expect it. And boom, all of a sudden it's too late. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, what? if you're ever bored sometime, look at uh, Mount Washington Weather Station. Ah, uh, oh, yes, that's where it gets so windy, right? Live most of the time. It's yeah. pretty amazing. I, I'm totally going to do that. Well, hey, Brandon, I appreciate the call, and uh, thanks Absolutely. for the thoughts. And yeah, we'll get you on a ship. I'll, uh, we'll have to sail together. We'll make it fun. Absolutely, buddy. Have All a good right. night. You too. Good talking to you. And happy Easter next week. You as well. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right, 407-413-9395, 407-413-9395 is the phone number. You can give us a call, and we're going to wish Margie a very happy birthday on April 14th. Her birthday is coming up. Yes, there is a cold about Florida, I will say. When you get cold in Florida, there's something about it. I don't know if it's, I don't know if Floridians experience this, because I don't know, Floridians always dress, I mean, if it gets, if it, if you're from Florida, like I know it's Floridians, you know, if it's 70, they're in coats. I'm not like that. But in Florida, when I get cold, I have a hard time recovering from the cold. Like I, I tend to stay cold. It's weird. There's, there's something about a Florida cold that it's hard to recover from. All right. So we have some comments here in the chat. So I'm going to get to those while we're waiting for our next call at 407. 413-9395, 407-413-9395. We could talk about the ship. What do you think about also? I'm going to talk about the, the Disney Destiny, the next wish class ship. Heroes and villains is the theme. What do you think about that theme? Heroes and villains, staterooms. Could they be, what do you think? Are they going to be pirate, like uh, the staterooms? Are they going to be, I don't know, like uh, Cruella de Vil staterooms? What, what would you like to see? Let's talk about that. But William has a question. So I have a question for you, Mike. Staying at a resort that's above Pop Century for the first time, it's going to be Caribbean Beach during my Halloween stay. What sort of thing should I expect over staying at Pop Century in the value resorts? Okay. Making the step up. You're moving on up down the Skyliner. So you're going to have a bigger room. Um, okay. Here's my spiel as a, as a travel agent. You're going to have a slide at your hotel. It's your hotel feature pool. That's one of the differences between a value and a moderate. If you're looking that moderate pool, moderate hotels at their feature pools have slides. Value hotels do not have slides at their pools. I don't know if you're going to be doing a sliding at your pool, but that is one of the perks. So you have a, you have a great feature pool at Caribbean beach. Obviously the key is at Caribbean beach, you have Skyliner access and over pop century you're at the Skyliner hub. You have one last, one less hop. You won't have to make the transfer. Like when you come from pop century and you're going to Epcot, you have to come from pop century, get off transfer at Caribbean beach to the Epcot monitor to the Epcot Skyliner line at Caribbean beach. You just get on wherever you're going to go. You're, you're already at the transfer station, which takes out the one additional hop. So you got direct access. So that's good. At Caribbean Beach, you also have access to the Riviera. So you have Prima Piatto to dine. You can walk over to the Topolino's Terrace if you want to get a reservation there. You also have access to their Skyliner station. So if you're staying in like Mozambique, you can walk over to that station. You're probably closer. Uh, you have a table service restaurant, Sebastian's Bistro. You have a great food court there, just like at Pop Century. That's nice. Um, like I said, bigger rooms, a little bit, uh, it's, 
not as animated of a theme. It's more of a geographical theme and the Caribbean theme. Uh, more slightly centrally more located, but not really. I mean, it's next door to pop century. So that that's about the big difference. All right, let's see here. Mike says he thinks prices at Saratoga Springs will increase with the drone show because you're going to get a little view of the uh, <laughs> of the of the the entertainment there, which who knows. Uh, let's see here. Kevin says, what do we got here? Next week going to be the fourth weekend. I've been away. Oh, next weekend, Kevin is going to be at Wilderness Lodge. Well, congratulations, Kevin. That is going to be a great weekend to be at Wilderness Lodge. That is going to be awesome. And people are agreeing that down at, at Florida, when you get cold, the reason it, it's hard to bounce back, Brandon says, in the he's on YouTube, and he was just talking to us. He says it's that cold humidity. And maybe that's it. It's 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 and, and lisa also says over on youtube it's a wet cold it, it is i mean i just remember this one time we were down there this god this is probably over 10 years ago at this point we took my mother-in-law down for new year's eve and we were there for a week we we're staying at all stars and i just remember one day we were in animal kingdom and we got cold and i just remember i could not shake it I just, we got back to the room, we turned the heat on full blast and I could not shake it. And, and I'm still like that. Sometimes in Florida, when I get cold, it's, I, I just, it, I struggle. A jacuzzi though, that'd be a good, a good drink from the bar. A jacuzzi, good, good solutions. Good solutions. All right. 407-413-9395. We'll take mini trip reports. We'll talk about the Disney destiny, the next ship delivering in, in actually they didn't even use the word delivering this time. I love this. They said, how about sailing in the year 2025? I think that's aggressive. How many of you remember about the inaugural cruise for, for the Disney wish? Does anybody remember that? I do because it got canceled because the ship wasn't ready. Now, again, that was during COVID there, there was special circumstances, but I, I wish that they're, I hope they're not being too aggressive with booking this destiny. And also here's another thing. Could they have not waited in the announcement until not the week that everybody and their brother are booking the summer of 2025 cruises. They put that out right dead in the middle of everybody booking these cruises for the summer of 2025. Were people not talking to each other at Disney? Seriously. Let everybody book their summer cruises and then put that out this coming week. What was going on with that? Anyway, we got a call and it looks like it is Vero Mike down in Vero Beach, Florida. Mike, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Mike? I figured I'd give you a call since you're talking about the, the Florida winters down here. Oh my gosh. I, well, I mean, I'm usually fine, but I mean, when I get that, that cold down there, I just can't shake it sometimes. We, we had an unusually cold, wet winter here in Florida. And I mean, I, I grew up down here, so this was an unusually colder winter for us down here. So we're starting to warm up today. Today was beautiful, you know, the little windy, but it's, we're, we're, yeah, it's it's super uh, unusually cold this winter. Hey, it's it's windy up in uh, the beer beer guest podcast studios too. We got a wind advisory. They told us to take in your uh, lawn umbrellas. You know, like your uh, we have a umbrella on our uh, deck for our you know our uh, picnic table. I mean, it's it's going to get crazy over the next twenty four hours. They said so. We I guess it's windy everywhere. It's nuts. Oh, you should see you should see the ocean down here. It's I'm a surfer, so it's been really big surf the last few days here. Yeah, well, stay that's safe been, out there. That's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's been fun. We're look at Disney Vero. They're actually Disney Vero. They're they're about to open up the beach this week. There, they've been doing a sand and turtle renourishment project up there. So the beach has been closed the entire month down here at, at Disney Vero. So oh, that's, man. that's been kind of kind of strange. So wow. All the people coming down here can't actually go to the beach in front of the resort for the last month until this weekend it opens up. I wonder if did they to give the guests a discount or something because they can go to the beach there. Did you have to go to did they I, go down somewhere like you know just catch a you car? Gotta or go, you got to go up to Sebastian or down more into Vero because that's actually on Wabasco Beach, uh, the Disney Resort. So I don't know if they give any discounts or provide transportation, but we did. We went there for. Uh, breakfast a couple weeks ago and it was it was a little bit slower than it normally is 
but that they're but they're talking about bringing back the uh, character dining April twentieth, so that's pretty cool. So we'll definitely check that out. That's actually the weekend we're doing the ten miler, so we'll probably check it out the following weekend. Nice. You getting excited for the race? I am excited. I'm training. I got some. I got my hokas. I've been I've been running. You know, I did the half marathon, of course, but I'm uh, I'm still training, and I'm getting ready for the ten miler. It's you know running. It's definitely getting a little bit easier for me since I've been doing it for a solid year now. So that's right. I'm getting, I'm getting rid of those aches and pains from the first year. You know. Oh, dude, I, mean, I got aches and pains constantly. I, you got to tell me what you're doing because oh, I'm always sore. I can't oh, wait to no, get out of a chair. Trust me, trust me. I know. <laughs> but I, I wanted to touch base. We actually, I, I never talked to you about the, the cruise we took in December. We did the Disney Wish. It was absolutely the best thing we've ever done Disney wise ever. Okay, so give us give us like a few highlights because we have obviously the Disney Destinies coming on. We found out about that this week. Same class ship. So basically it's right. gonna be like for people that don't know, you know, well, they're gonna have sister we've done, ships. We've done a dream before. Okay. So like the, well, so, so we, people that don't know, like so this will be a sister ship to the wish. So like the, the fantasy and the dream are sister ships. So they're basically the same right. ship, just things have different names and different themes. So this will be the destiny will be a sister to the fan, to the wish. So that's kind of where we're going, but tell, tell us what you liked about the wish. Yeah. I, I found the wish to be a, a nicer ship. It's more, uh, it's brighter than, than the, uh, it is than the dream. You no, know, it, it's just, it's, I mean, we were just blown away. We sat in the, in the, uh, the lobby every single night and did the kiss good night. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, for the, for the three days we were on it, I don't think I, I, I think I slept like 15 hours of that. You know, we were just up, just, I just wanted to see everything and do everything. So it was incredible. The, the shows were, the shows were incredible. The food was incredible. This, I mean, the service is of course, next level. We love the, uh, the star Wars bar was amazing. What? Um, my gosh. I mean, I could just go on and on. It was just, you know, of course, Castaway was amazing. We didn't do too much in Nassau. Uh, we got off the boat, walked around a little bit, but we just, you know, went right back onto the ship. But the ship was incredible. I mean, like I said, we go to Disney all the time. It was probably the, the best thing we've ever done Disney wise. Yeah. So which of the restaurants did you like the best? Like the, the, the main rotation restaurants? I think our favorite one was the frozen restaurant. That was the best time. Definitely. The theming, the show was amazing. Just and it was it was the second night. So it was a three night trip. So the second night it was just the vibe was crazy. Everyone was just, you know, so excited to be there. But I don't know. I think it was the best food and the best atmosphere and, and the best show. You know, the dinner show was awesome. It's with Olaf. It's, it's wild. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it it's like a it's it's like um it's like Chef Mickey's on steroids. Have you ever been to Chef Mickey's? I mean, it's busy. Yeah. It it's it's uh it's insane because you got like a you got a little show happening in the middle of the restaurant. You have yep. Olaf coming around on a cart like meeting but i mean you get a chance like get up close and get a picture with them you know you have uh oh. sven sven coming around i mean it's it's it is highly you're swinging your napkins i mean we were like i was almost sweating by the end of that meal it was a good meal but i mean it was i mean I, it was exhausting yeah <laughs> uh the pirate night was amazing um oh my gosh the, we, we saw movies um again i we saw all the shows the little mermaid was absolutely it was incredible the cast was amazing the show was amazing um oh boy of course castaway was amazing i got to do the the, uh, the castaway 5k that's fun sometimes so that was a lot of fun <laughs> depends on the weather but yeah if you wish I, I can't i can't say enough good things about it the only bad thing was uh, the three nights you know yeah the next time we do it i think i don't know the four night definitely you know the three nights went, went really quick yeah, I'm I'm so looking forward because I've only done a seven night on Disney Cruise Line one time. We did a podcast cruise uh right. in 2017 on the fantasy for seven nights. And this summer we're doing another and, seven night. I'm so excited for that. And for us, it's easy because we're we live an hour and a half, not even an hour and a half from Cocoa Beach. So we're quick trip up 95 and we're I mean we're there. So it's not like the whole big planning. We don't have to fly in, you know. So we're lucky in that, yep. you know, that respect, you know. It, they're fun. Yeah, the I, sea days are my favorite, honestly. I love sea days. Like I just like, you know, playing trivia and going to the tastings and you know, hanging out for an hour or two in the sports bar, you know, just just hanging, you know, just sitting in a you know, on a lounge chair on deck four and looking at the ocean, reading a book. Uh, you know, when do you yeah. get to do that? You know, it's all, especially I mean, you, you get to see the ocean, right? You're in Florida, you're in Vero Beach. Like 
I, yeah. I love the ocean, but I'm in Missouri. You know, like I can like sea days are un unreal for me because I never get to see the ocean and just listen and you to know the what? waves. I, I never get sick of the ocean, even though I'm, I grew up on the beach and I see the beach. I work right on the beach. I see it every day. I even when I was in Castaway, I, I, I spent a few hours in the ocean, you know, so that's cool. That's cool. You appreciate it. Stuff. Yeah. What's that? I said that's super cool that you still appreciate it, even though you like you're surrounded by it. I mean, that's probably pretty rare down there. Oh yeah, it's 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 awesome. We love it. And we have you know right north of uh, Vero Beach, we have Sebastian Inlet. It's probably the most beautiful part of Florida. The most beautiful beach, it really is. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you had such really? a great time, and uh, I know you're going to kill the ten miler. So uh, good good luck with that. Oh, ready? I want I want to definitely get a great time and finish sub two, sub two hours for sure, and you know, get it, get a good time so I can get in a better crowd, you know, for the, I, we signed up for the, uh, the wine and dine. I'm doing a half marathon. So. Oh yeah. Hopefully I can. You've been bit by the bug. I can move up a little bit. <laughs> so you're going to, you're going to sign up for marathon weekend. Cause that's the next one I'm doing. I think, you know, I, I we want to, we, we probably will. Um, you know, I've, I've never done a full marathon, so we're, I'm kind of just kicking it around. So I really want to do it, but we, we'll probably end up doing it. I'm just saying, if you want to do the full marathon, it kicks your butt in every way possible, but it feels awesome when you cross the line, but it's, it's five, yeah. six, seven hours of suckage. I'll tell you that, but, uh, it's pretty cool when you're finished. Yeah. Cross that line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely the biggest high crossing that, that finish line. That's, that's a hundred percent true. Yeah. But it's definitely. no fun. It's not really too much fun during it, but, uh, it, it's fun when you finish. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's worth it. It's worth it. The pain is, is it definitely is. worth it. It is. The, I like the ears behind me. <laughs> Those are fun. Anyway. When I finish the 10 miler, we're going to go right over to uh, to Germany and we're going to go to the, uh, oh, what's that dessert place with the, the butter bars? They oh, have a new chocolate caramel cookie. I forget the name of it. I saw it on DFB. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the caramel couche. Yes. I'm going right there. I'm going to celebrate. And, uh, that's the plan. So, all right. Well, hey, good luck. Well, awesome. we still got time. We'll we'll talk to you before that. I hope. Definitely. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right. Well, hey, you guys have a good Easter down there, and it's great talking to you, buddy. Thank you. Awesome. Happy, happy Easter, everybody. Good all luck, right. guys. Thank you. Take care, buddy. Stay safe. Bye bye. All right, Vera Mike. There, love talking to him. I mean, he's living the life down there. Vera Beach, man. Some people just living living in great places. And uh, uh, Ryan, our great friend there over on Facebook was asking about uh, where that Haunted Mansion bar is going to be. That's going to be on the Disney Treasure, which is going to start sailing next year. To uh, the, It's going to be doing seven-night sailings, Caribbean sailings, alternating Eastern and Western Caribbean sailings. So if you don't want to go out for three or four-night sailings, you want to go on the good long sailings to the Caribbean. So if you want to go places like Cozumel, Grand Cayman, where's it going? That'd be the Western. Where else does the Western go? I think it goes to Jamaica. Of course, they all go to Castaway Key, but this will go to Lighthouse Point too. Um, and that'd be your Western sailing. Uh, Eastern would be Tortola, St. Thomas. Where else does that go? Because I'm going on that one. <laughs> like, where's the other island? It goes three places. Castaway Key. I think it only goes to Castaway Key. Anyway, if you want to go to the Eastern Caribbean, also, that's fun. So I, I got to check and see where we're going. I'm more excited. Like I said, I'm more excited for the three sea days. I cannot wait. So yeah, the treasure will be awesome because it's it's got the whole new. It's gonna have like a, it, it feels more like an adventure land theme on the treasure. It's I think it's gonna be because Mike was just mentioning how the wish. We talked about this after the podcast cruise, especially Scott and I. We've really kind of broken this down to each other. The wish is a princess ship to us. It's very white. It's very bright, but it's very like Cinderella princesses and there's nothing wrong with that, but it felt very pr like princess oriented. It felt very, I don't know. It just felt like it was like very princess themed where I think the treasure is going to feel more like, ah, like piratey, like a, like a dude's basement. I, I could totally be missing this. I, that could be totally off, but I feel like it's going to be like paneling in Brown's. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm off on that, but I just feel like that's what it's going to be. And maybe that's more my theme. Like that's how I want my basement. I want my basement to be like a seventies, eighties basement, like paneling and Browns and adventure land and like trunks <laughs> ropes. I don't know. That's what I was thinking with the treasure. We'll see. Cause I mean, that's a guy, you know, like in the old love boat, 
remember the pirate's cove that Isaac worked at on, on the, on the, the love boat. Like that's how I'd want my basement to be. That'd be sweet with that. Like little behind his bar. He had that uh, stained glass window. The best. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got going on in the chat? We don't have a beach in Oregon. We have the coast. There's sand and some would consider a beach, but it's not like Florida beach and the Pacific is always cold. Uh, no fun. That's William. He says the best thing at Carmel Kush is the gingerbread cake cookie thing they do during the holidays. Yeah, that's right. Okay. William's right. Yeah. You only do go to Tortola and St. Thomas and Castaway Key for the Eastern, which is fine because Hey, C days, three C days. All right. We have our next call. Hey, who's right. joining us. Hey, Mike, it's Katie from Greenville, South Carolina. Hey, Katie down in South Carolina. I just watched, speaking of that Aerial America show, I watched the South Carolina special today, so I know everything about your state. I know BMW's there. I know how it started in Charleston, and I, I know everything about your state today. What's going on? Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> so in Greenville, we're about, I'm about like 25 minutes from the BMW plant. Yeah, it's in, it's in Greer, by the way, because, see, I paid attention. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> My wife says, you are such a nerd, Mike. And I'm like, that's just the kind of stuff I like. I'm, I'm, I am a nerd. Anyway, what's going on? <laughs> so I, I'm a little late on this. I was going to call in a couple months ago, but I actually was trying to call in for a couple of Sunday shows on the wrong number. And it just kept going to some random Florida number. And I didn't figure it out till recently that I was like, oh my gosh, I've been calling the wrong number this whole time. So, some dude's <laughs> I like, I, I don't know. Again. I don't know the answer. And I don't like Disney. Quit calling me. I'm just trying to watch uh, TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But um, Mike, you actually booked my last trip, our trip for marathon weekend. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. And so I know like you and Scotty D recently were talking about um, best bites at Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. So and give, so yeah. we we went to Boma Marathon Weekend, and we've eaten at Boma a few times. But and I think they always have bread pudding. But I feel like maybe they had some kind of special bread pudding that was maybe left over from the holidays because it had some kind of like cranberries and like this orange glaze sauce. And I don't remember that being there before. So, but I, and I know Disney World has a ton of good bread puddings, but that bread pudding. Is just like the absolute best thing I've ever had in my life. Like top dessert. It was so fantastic. I was so stuffed already from all the normal food that is there. That's great. And then I had a giant plate of that bread pudding. So I think that is my best. I wanted to call in and give my best bite. See, I love this because these things are so obscure a lot of times. And the shame of this is that sounds like it was probably a limited time offering, right? Yeah, I think it was. I just don't remember it before. And it felt like it had like a kind of holiday flair to oh. it. And oh my gosh, it was so good. I know. It's like I, one of the things I love at Walt Disney World, and they have them more than they used to. Those whoopie pie things that are red. They have them around the holidays. Have you seen? They, they yeah. usually have them down like marathon weekend. They're still le they're left over. But they have them. Now they have them more than they used to. But they, they'd have them like at the studios around Christmas. They're like those red whoopie pies. Basically, I mean, they're not that. I mean, you'll probably mm -hmm. get them at the grocery store, to be honest. They just have like whipped cream in the middle and stuff. But they're so dang good. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen those on like a lot of the like Instagram pages and stuff. I've never yeah. had one, but they look really good. Oh, I mean, they're they're not like fancy. You know, they're they're pretty simple. But you know, I I don't need anything special. They're tasty. But yeah, it's it's but it's a Christmas thing, so you can't get them like in July usually or anything when I'm there. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's oh my yeah, gosh, and then another so thing Go we're ahead. always a big fan, and I know y'all are too, of the um Mickey beignets. Oh. I mean, those are just always like an absolute go to. And we stayed at Caribbean Beach this past time, which worked out really great, but um, we knew we were gonna have to figure out how to make our way over to Port Orleans. And I actually ran into Scotty G that weekend at um at Topolino's. We were just finishing up and he was about to go eat. And we actually left there and went and took a lift over to Port Orleans to get our Mickey beignets. And our lift driver um, was kind of talking to us and we were telling her like, yeah, we're just going over to Port Orleans. Like we're just getting Mickey beignets and coming right back. And she was like, oh, like I'm from New Orleans. Like I lived there, you know, the first <laughs> half of my life. Like, did they comp and like, how are they compared to the beignets in New Orleans? And I was like, well, I have no idea because I've never been to New Orleans, but how about we bring you some bag and you can just tell us what you think. 
So she actually waited for us while we went in <laughs> and got Mickey DJs. And we got back in the car and the three of us with the Lyft driver just sat there and ate Mickey beignets in her car. And um, she said that they were different, but they were really good. They're a different texture, but she loved them and was just like so thankful that we <laughs> that we shared Mickey beignets with her. Yeah. So I feel like we converted someone. I, I could imagine. I mean, either way, even if they don't taste like New Orleans uh, beignets, they, they got to be good. They're donuts, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know how authentic they are either. I've never been down to the French Quarter, you know, down there either. But I mean, I couldn't imagine anybody says they're not good. They're fried dough with powdered sugar all over. Right. Them. They're so tasty. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to be bad. No, they're they're not going to be good. <laughs> they're not going to be bad. They're going to be good every time. Because especially when you get them warm in that bag and shake them up with the powdered sugar. Oh, so, so good. good. Oh, my gosh. Now, I'm, my mouth's like watering. I could go for some right now. I wish I wish I had a beignet <laughs> place around here. Oh, my gosh. So good. Yeah. So you have a trip and on I, the horizon? I was going to tell you, too, that um, you, you had booked us. I was trying to get a little mermaid room. We stayed at Caribbean Beach. And you put in a room request for us and that worked out perfectly. Uh, we got one of the new little mermaid rooms in the Trinidad section. And I had done a lot of research online and I know like the Trinidad section gets, they get, you know, like some people kind of down it cause it is kind of far away from like the main hub, but we didn't really feel like it was that far. I guess it's all, you know, perspective, but um, it, where we stayed at least was right by the Skyliner and by the Joffrey station. It was just like a four or five minute walk maybe. And so it was a great location. The room was beautiful, like brand new updated. And so I just wanted to give that a plug for anybody that's going to be staying at Caribbean beach. I'm glad you um, did the Trinidad section. I'm glad you did that because, tonight. because the thing is it used to be, it used to feel more remote pre Skyliner because there wasn't anything else going on down at that end of the resort. <laughs> Like now the Skyliners down there, it is way more attractive to stay down there because you can walk out of your room right to the Skyliner. Like you said, there's a Joffrey's coffee station yeah. there. And actually they have that, I think it's called the Spyglass Grill, which is kind of yeah. like a little, it's not a full on restaurant or anything like that, but it's got a few options there to get something to eat and drink. Uh, basically right there for that section of the resort. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was great. Um, we really enjoyed staying there. We'll probably go back to French quarter next time just because we just got to have easy access to the beignets, but, um, <laughs> we did, we did really enjoy, <laughs> uh, uh, Caribbean beach too. So I like the way you roll. That's right. <laughs> beignets all the way. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, I'm gonna have to go to Crumble Cookie tonight or something now. <laughs> it's close. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. It's across the street. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just wanted to to call in and give. I meant to do this a couple months ago, right after Marathon Weekend. So I thought I'd call in and give my my little update and my my best bite. All right. Well, hey, don't be a stranger. Oh. Give us a call, uh, and, and don't be uh, so long in between calls. We'll be waiting for you. All right. Sounds All right. good. Happy Thanks Easter down there in South Carolina. You take care. Thanks. Happy Easter. All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right. And now it is time. We got to give Scotty G a call live from Walt Disney World. So let's do this. Let's see if we can do this here. Let's see what happens here. Let's see here. Let's see. Contacts. Let's hit the S. Actually, he's probably under the G's. Let's see here. If I hit this, send it to here. Are we here? And let's see what we get here. Hello, this is Scotty G. Scotty G, you are live on the air on the BOGP open line. What's going on? And I just happened to be in Be Our Guest restaurant. How awesome was that? I know. I was sitting you up there on the show. What's going on, buddy? It's been uh, too long since I've talked to you. Yeah, it's been a little bit. Um, we're here in the main dining room of Be Our Guest. So I'm looking at some snow right now. We're like right here on the window. Nice. Um, it's pretty loud. I hope I'm not coming in too crazy, but, uh, you know, people are in here having a good time, having some dinner. Um, as usual though, they're about 40 minutes behind schedule. So we had to wait a little bit to get seated, but that's okay. This is awesome. If you sound crystal clear to me, I, I'm asking our listeners if it sounds okay for them. I hope so, but okay. I love your, uh, awesome. I'm showing your little emoji there guy because, uh, <laughs> he's that's hilarious. Awesome. Thumbs up. Guy. So it's interesting. Cause I, 
it's crazy. Like, when, when did Be Our Guest Restaurant open? Like, 2012? 2013, I think, right? Like, when the first expansion of Fantasyland. And here we are, like, 10 years later, and people are still, like, exploring all the rooms, you know, taking their time with dinner. And, like, it's just crazy, like, how, like, popular I still think this restaurant is. I was wondering, I was, I was going to ask you that because, and everybody says it sounds super clear, which I hear nobody in the background. I mean, it sounds like just me and you talking at your house, to be honest. Um, that's crazy. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, so that that's a great take because I haven't been in there in ages. I haven't eaten there probably since like 2017. And it that is a, 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 a super interesting take that, you know, you don't think about it. You think everybody's been there and done that where you have a ton of people in there exploring it for the first time right now. That's I mean, that's my assumption because they were we had a 630 ADR and we didn't get seated to like 710. Um, and I think that's because everyone takes their time, like to explore like the West Wing, they explore the other room, they take photos. So because it is a gorgeous restaurant, and I and I see people walking around like doing that tonight. So it, it's just it just it's awesome to me that people are still like attracted to the restaurant. It's kind of old, but it, it's new for a lot of people. So I think that's great. Oh, I just got the just got the gray stuff delivered to the table here, my dessert trio. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you got to take care oh, no, of the, no, no, the no, no, you're fine. So one of the girls will take a photo of it for me. I'm sure. Right? Okay, yeah, because I mean, yeah, the, the cam. The, one of our rules, everybody knows, in our traveling group. in the middle with the gray stuff. I gotta hear. I gotta hear this. Hang on. We gotta hear yeah. this. Just let us hear. Right, it's a dark chocolate strawberry truffle, hazelnut on top. Oh, great! Thank you. And for you guys, a picture of the castle here. The beast has signed it for you as well. Thank oh, you. that's very nice. The beast. Absolutely. Thank you for coming and dining with us at the castle. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed everything. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. Oh, wait, 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 yeah. the, be, the beast gave you an autograph picture. Does he know? Yes. He's, you're, the, your famous the beast podcast. Gave us picture, the beast gave us the autograph picture along with the check. So, you know, he's like, <laughs> that'll he's be like, $200, sir. Yeah. I appreciate you dining with us tonight. Here's my, here's my card. And please, <laughs> please make all checks payable to the beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's so funny. They <laughs> ease it on by putting an autograph picture on top of the bill. Oh, oh my god, yes. that's so funny. Uh, so, so it is interesting. As uh, you as you know, like Magic Kingdom has traditionally been like a dry park, and like in the last few years, like you can get a like a beer at Liberty Tree or you, or something at um like Crystal Palace. I actually did get a kind of an old like a Manhattan tonight, so I did have a little bourbon here just to try it out. And it was pretty good. Went well with the dinner, I would say, tonight. Very nice. Very nice. Like you, you just want to see what it was like to have a little alcohol in the Magic Kingdom to say you have. I, I feel, <laughs> it feels a little weird, I'll tell you that. But, you rule breaker. But, uh, yeah. yeah I, I mean, it was on the menu, Mike. I mean, I, I just saw it there. Hey, I mean, yeah, why not? So let me ask you this. So I yeah. is, is today the day that you said you were going to do the traditional kind of go hard? Because, I mean, you guys were out early. You were rope dropping Epcot. And you've been going solid all day. I mean, not not like yeah. terribly hard, but you've been going all day. Yeah, we, we've been going all day. We stopped at the room for like an hour and a half just to, you know, wind down a little bit, watch a little basketball. And then, uh, yeah, then we just came right here. We took a bus, you know, because you go to Magic Kingdom, you got to take a bus, right? Yep. Um, and it was it was a full bus. I had to stand uh, most of the way. Um, so that, that was kind of different for me. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know if we're going to go – all the way tonight. I mean, we're, we're pretty tired. Oh, Emily just mouthed. We're going to go all the way. Yes, <laughs> Emily. Hang on. So, <laughs> I need to shot off that like sports horn. For you, Emily. <laughs> I mean, so happily ever after is at eight 30. So I think we're just going to watch from fantasy land because it's been a while since we've done that. And honestly, it's kind of nice, right? You can just, it's not as crowded, you know, on main street, like you miss the projections on the castle, but you can still relax and watch watch a great show honestly so i think we're going to try to watch it like near the cat uh, beast castle maybe a little bit like at the end of that bridge um tonight for happily ever after and That's... then uh then we'll just see how then we'll just see how it goes from there so you I mean it sounds like a good point yeah you're you're staying longer than i probably would make it i don't think i'd make it this long but i mean epcot today looked pretty nice i mean the weather looked good you guys <sighs> You guys were going around doing flower and garden, having some of the the great eats, some drinks, some. You took. Yep. I got to say, if people have, again, I've been plugging the Discord, but you, I appreciate what you're posting in the Discord because your pictures you're taking are so gorgeous, and you're taking. I'll be honest, <laughs> you're taking me along for the trip with your Discord pictures. So, be our guest podcast.com slash Discord. Go check them out because you're killing it over there. 
well, I'm glad to bring you along. And I'll just, uh, I'll post some more then uh, later today. But um, yeah, so we did the early entry and we're like, where do we, where do we go? Do we go towards like Frozen Ever After, Ratatouille? Did we go to Soren? We decided on Test Track, which I think was a good move, even though like they came out and like, Test Track is currently closed. We're like, oh man, we made, <laughs> we made the wrong mistake. You know, we actually woke up, got here early and did all the right things. But it was only down for like three minutes. And honestly, we were off the ride by like, I don't know, still 10 minutes before the park opened for regular guests. And that just gave us that huge, huge advantage as we always talk about, right? So we got one big thing done. And then we went across the way, did Soren and living with the land. Like we were just hitting all the things we wanted well before 10 o'clock. And then we did Guardians um, right at then. So, I mean, everything was hidden so right on all cylinders. And we just, oh, yeah, we, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, we went to Starbucks and there was like five people, not even five people in line. Like Liz just walked right in. No and, way. And no em- way. That Emily, place is always so we, a nut house. I know. So Emily and I, well, all of us like to do like those scavenger hunts, you know, that yeah. they have around the festivals. And it seems like we luck out a lot over spring break. Like, so they're doing the Easter egg one again. So we, we're doing the Easter egg, the the pollen one, like the spikes pollen. Yeah. And um, so we went to go buy those maps, and then Elizabeth just went to Starbucks, and she already had the drinks when we got in there. Like she was in there like five minutes. It was just unbelievable. Um, But yeah, so like that was great. And then yeah, then we just toured like Flower Garden, hit up some food booths and all that. I mean, it was just it was the perfect Epcot day, Mike. It really was because you know this is my favorite festival, and like and especially if you go early in the festival too, like with the flowers just, just really pop this time of year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And plus it was a Sunday, which kind of had me worried for you because I worry about going to festivals like, you know, over the weekends, especially with it being well, spring break. Right oh yeah. I know. I was kind of nervous about that too. So yesterday was like, our, so, you know, we like flew in late Friday, didn't get to our room and checked in really until like one thirty in the morning. So we didn't do anything obviously on Friday, but um, so yesterday we Took it kind of chill, you know. We went to early lunch at Sanaa, and then we went and got our like sodas and waters for the week. And then we're like, well, you know, let's hop into the studios like around two o'clock. And like it was not, I wouldn't say it was empty, but we were able to like like we did Slinky Dog Dash in 30 minutes, you know, on a Saturday in yeah, the middle of the afternoon. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, that thing's usually kind of yeah, that's I mean the 60 minutes yeah. is kind of like table stakes with that attraction. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, Liz just reminded me. It was posted 80. And I said, you know what? It's the first day of our trip. Our legs are fresh. You know, we're excited. <laughs> like, like this is going to be the one day that I, that we're all willing to wait 80 minutes for. Because yeah. we didn't do it over marathon, you know, so we wanted to do it. And then to our surprise, it was 25, 30 minutes. Nice. <laughs> it was nice. so crazy. But yeah, we did like, and that's with Rock and Roller Coaster down too and Spring Break. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep watching the crowds, you know, as we go around. Like, I've caught didn't really seem too bad. But, yeah, Emily just made a point. Like, when we got here at Magic Kingdom, it seemed really crazy. <laughs> so, so we'll see. Maybe everyone was at Magic Kingdom today. I don't know. But, yeah, they say they say Magic Kingdom would be crazy on Sundays because, like, people are either arriving or, or leaving for the week. So, who knows? Thank you so much. That's a good That's a good point. I thought the same as you, though. Like, why did I book Epcot on Sunday during the festival, all the locals? But, you know, it, it was it was a perfect day, and like, like we're wearing like kind of long sleeves now, but like the breeze was so good today. Like, I mean, when you're in the sun, it felt a little warm at times, but I mean, you you've been here on some perfect days, Mike, and it was one of those days. It was just perfect, uh, spending the time with the family, all the food and drink, you know, just exploring little showcase. I actually ran into a listener today while we we're getting the Starbucks. I believe his name was Mike from Tennessee. Want to give him a shout out? I felt like I, afterwards, I was like, oh, man, I should have, like, taken a photo with the guy. You know, he, like, came over, approached me. Like, him and his wife are here. She's his teacher. They're on spring break. But awesome to see Mike uh, from Tennessee today, too. That's awesome. Love it. So, so I'll cut you loose here shortly so you can get your dessert and get your get, get going. But, uh, yeah, the, dude, the girls are, like, uh, the girls, like, Emily's, like, slamming through. This. That's what I was going to get. She's, working, she's I, working on the grace. Stuff. That's what I say. If it was Mallory, I'd have no dessert by this point. I'd be done. But real, so real quick, <laughs> Coronado, because right. people are, you know, loving Coronado because you're posting the pictures. What, how's Coronado oh, yeah. been so far? Good? So, Coronado has been fantastic. We had dinner at Maya Grill last night. You know, I mean, we know it's one of our favorite spots, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Smooth Jazz Guy was there. I missed getting a selfie with him, though. Like, oh, he, he ended oh, his oh, set oh. kind of early. So we got there and he was jamming out. Like I kind of nodded at him, you know, gave him the look. And then when we left, he was like nowhere to be. Cause I mean, he's got to take a break, right? Yeah, that's you know? true. I know he's a magician and all, but like, you know, he's got to, you know, he's got to refuel up and take a little break. 
<laughs> but um, Coronado is just great. You know, I mean, we haven't like explored the resort too much because honestly, like we've been in Epcot like all day today, you know, and then just came here. And then yesterday was kind of like, you know, getting the getting the groceries and all that. And so I feel like we're going to hit some pool time tomorrow or obviously like later in the week because we're big pool people. But I'll tell you, we got Casitas, which I love that. I love that area. Casitas 4. We're in a corner room on the first floor right by the fitness center, Mike. So I had the view of the pool too. And this is a standard room we booked. So very, very happy with the room location that we got this time. You're in a room that's almost exactly where I was for... Marathon weekend. Marathon weekend. Yeah, I mean, real close. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Liz just said that the other day or yesterday. The other day. We haven't only been here like two days. But uh, she's like, oh my God, I think we're like right by where Mike's room was. You're almost um, exactly where I was. Yeah, I was almost exactly where you guys are. Great location. And and, and I did the worst like husband thing ever, right? I tried to tell her like, no, no, (laughs) I'm thinking of another time. And she's like, no, I'm pretty sure it was like just two months ago. I'm like, no, no, no. And then I was like, yeah. No, Liz that is, is right. She's well, always right. She is right. She's smart. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, so, yeah. but hey, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, let us kind of jump in here on a Sunday night. I know you're in the middle of your vacation having dinner, but man, I just yeah, got to tell no, you, I, I love, I love seeing that you're getting to have the family time. You're having such a good time and the weather's been good. The crowds have been good because I, I know how yeah. much you love your trips and I'm just glad that everything's going a okay so far. Yeah. Things are going great. I mean, I mean, we still got a whole nother week to go. So lots of hosts, lots of Discord stuff. Like, be on the lookout. We're going to be, uh, Gardner, the Gardner crew is going to be posting a lot of, a lot of stuff out there. Hope you, I hope everyone follows along. We will, man. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate the time, buddy. And uh, you guys just keep having fun. And uh, I'll be, I'll be following along this week because I'm working, chugging along here in the office. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. I'm about to go enjoy the, the great stuff here at BR Gus. I hear it's delicious. <laughs> It is delicious. All right. Just tell ask the chef. Take, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> tell the girls I said hello and have fun. We'll do. All, All right. right we'll take care, Scott. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Right. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. All right. Scotty G there live from Beast Castle in the Magic Kingdom. How about that? That's pretty cool. He took the time out of his vacation to talk to us. And that's going to do it for tonight's show. Wanted to wrap it up with Scotty G live on location because he's our co-host. And uh, he's taking the night off, but not really. He wanted to talk to you guys. So that's pretty cool. So thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, stand by. We may do this again tomorrow. Or uh, sorry, not tomorrow. Next week, but it is Easter Sunday, so we are having family over. So stand by. Watch the socials for this. But I probably will be able to do a live call-in show because most of the family leaves in plenty of time to do a live call-in show. So we'll see. Probably next Sunday night, seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Central. So join us for the fun here on all the locations. Don't forget, join us on the Discord, brguestpodcast.com slash Discord. It's the BR Guest Podcast Clubhouse. We talk 24-7. You can drop in with a cup of coffee in the morning. You can check it in before you go to bed at night. It's a fun place to hang out over your lunch break during the day. We're all the listeners just dropping in, sharing pictures. Scott's sharing his vacation with us. We're talking about uh, somebody's in there just this afternoon talking about she's making her ADRs tomorrow. We're going over her schedule, giving her ideas for you know, you should try this ADR on this day and, you know, look at your, use your dining credits for this. It's, it's a lot of fun. We're talking about cruises coming up. Everybody book, a lot of people book cruises this week. So we're talking about, you know, some people are on the same ship, same cruise. So we're making plans for that. It's just so much fun. So come on over and join us on the discord again, brguestpodcast.com slash discord. Also, the show is brought to you by the magic for less travel. That's a great way to support the show. I'd love to personally help you plan your next Disney vacation. Just go over to the PR guest pot or just go over to uh, the magic for less.com. Fill out the quote form, no obligation, no cost to use the services. Just mention the show and we'll be working together again over at the magic for less.com. If you want to, and you're shopping online, just use our Amazon affiliate link. It's be slash Amazon. Super simple. Just click through that and you can become a Patreon supporter of the show as well. Just go to patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. $5 a month supports our podcast. And if you do that, you get a bonus show every week. It's called Mike in the Midwest. Just put out a show today. It's about my former speed skating coach, Ron, who taught me something that I think about every day to this day from back in 1996. So coming over to patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. Give me a follow on social media at be our guest Mike. And we'll have the shows this week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Hope you'll join us for that. All right, time to get out of here and whoo. My voice is wore out, but I'll be back again. If you want to join me as we record the shows live this week, it'll be on Monday around 530 Eastern. So hop on in. We may have some call-ins this week on Monday. So join us for that because I don't know who's going to be joining me to record the shows this week. So I might need your help there too. 
All right. So have a good night. Have a good Thursday. If you're listening on the feed, I hope you have a great week. So for just me, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. See everybody. Have a good one. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to do a show next week. I, we probably will. All right. I'll see you because I like doing the shows. Bye.